Welcome to this uh, great panel discussion as a part of our uh, film festival Culture Cinema 2021. Uh, we have a truly global representation from across the continents. Uh, panel discussion is uh, today's discussion is about role of culture in bringing prosperity and peaceful coexistence globally via cinema. Very interesting uh, topic, which will be moderated by Sean Sisterna. Sean is an accomplished multi-award winning film director. Uh, he has uh, done work on documentaries, biographies, feature films, and uh, one of his recent films from the wine has been pretty famous, doing very well all over the world. Uh, we have Ms. Leah Rinaldo, who is the managing director of the largest culinary film festival in the world, Devore Food Film Festival. Food is a part of culture, interesting part of interesting aspect of world cultures uh, food binds people and then we have jerusha stewart she is the founder and executive director of award winning barrow beach fine plus film festival she is a professional speaker she is also a best selling author and award winning entrepreneur uh, we have ms bina paul with us who is the artistic director of the International Film Festival of Kerala and International Documentary and Short Film Festival of Kerala. And she is an experienced film editor. She has also been a jury member of various international uh, film festivals and we are privileged to have her with us. Uh, we have Ms. Sapna Bhavnani, who is the founder of Bench Film Festival, which aims to push women talent to the world. She is also a well-known hairstylist, actor, spoken word artist, writer, director, producer, truly multi-talented, multi-faceted personality with us. And uh, we are very happy to have you all uh, as a part of this panel. Uh, I would like to pass on the baton to Sean to take it ahead. It's your show. <laughs> Please uh, talk to everybody, share the experiences and uh, give us an enriching experience in terms of culture and what all you know you all have been doing globally so indian audience can benefit from that we all will learn a lot today in this session as we go ahead welcome to everybody You're welcome thank you for that wonderful introduction praveen thank you so much uh so good morning or good afternoon good evening wherever you are in the world um welcome to culture cinema 2021 and today we are discussing uh the role in bring in culture and bringing prosperity and peaceful coexistence globally via cinema so cinema is something we all uh work in uh but culture is this more of a broad topic it includes uh, traditions history uh local art literature um any sort of uh um idea or or way of, of living that um denotes how you know a certain culture lives their lives and and um this is a, a unique way to experience what other um people from around the world uh how they how they share that through uh, through cinema so this this panel will definitely encapsulate that theme of the festival um and to start it off i I'll maybe throw out a random question. I'm a filmmaker. I'm attracted to projects that have um, a positive message or, or test my skills. Um, but everyone here is a, a festival programmer. So is that um, when you uh, embark upon a, a festival, how do you approach festival curation? Is that because you have something specific you want to say or does it change year after year? Maybe we'll just throw that out to one of our, our esteemed panelists. Okay, Bina, take it away. Just unmute yourself. Yeah, thanks, uh, Sean. Thanks, Praveen. Lovely to be here. Lovely to be talking about something quite close to one's heart. Uh, because um, though one belongs to cinema, uh, when I got into the festival uh, world, I understood how important cinema becomes not only for the filmmaker or only for uh, the particular audience that uh, perhaps you target, but also about how it permeates into ways of thinking, ways of looking. And um, 
unfortunately um, we are rather fractured today i mean the world has uh, is sort of looking at things so watertight nowadays um, so alarmingly watertightly uh, whether it is in language whether it is in um, you know in tradition uh, that for me the festival becomes the vehicle to open the world out to the universe, uh, to the audience uh, to say look uh, you might be terribly proud of your culture or your way of life or your language but there is the whole wide world out there and uh, everybody has something to share to uh, uh, you know to have uh, and also in common with you basically whether even if it's religion or whatever so for me it is um, it's it's really a passion and i really look uh, for all kind of diversity when i program i have tried uh, through various things uh, through various programmings over the years to include voices that you don't hear of um, countries that are perhaps not considered great filmmaking countries um, you have languages that are vanishing uh yeah so uh, very important um, part of what i think the film festival does is to bind people um uh, in an understanding that um you know um uh, humanity is one right and i think you see that in cinema so suddenly you watch a film from africa and you see that a little child is going through a problem pretty much like what you are having your girl children going through here or you have a discussion with a woman filmmaker who is uh, also um, sort of fighting similar battles or you discover the joy of bringing up a child uh, so uh, i found over the years that uh, it's such a binding uh, lovely way of sharing without sloganeering if you know what i mean it's not sloganeering it's about actually uh, experiencing the other and understanding there is no other action so that that for me is very much a passion and very much a part of what i think the film festival hopes to achieve <clears throat> apart from the business and apart from the uh, the art i mean all art is of course about this but I, uh, you know what i mean it's uh, it's a it is very much a driving um, force for me a driving passion to Uh, have the people especially i think um, i'm sorry if i'm taking too long just to say that kerala is a very <laughs> kerala uh, which, where i organize this festival is a very uh, uh, slightly smug society if you know what i mean they've done very well they've got <laughs> very good indices they're quite prosperous so within the indian context so i think often it's good to shake that up a bit so yeah that's uh, very much part of what i like to do and what i've been doing these years wonderful so um so jumping across uh oceans to to canada from india so lia um food is a big part of any culture so can you talk about how um films like about culinary subjects can bring people together perhaps differently than than other themes in in festivals yeah thanks shan and good to see you all here Um for the film festival for uh, Devour uh we're really fortunate because it, because we are a niche film festival and we are looking for that sort of culinary storyline through everything it really does take us to every corner of the earth so i feel like globally we are seeing so much each year and also because there uh the way that we structure our festival uh as the largest culinary film festival in the world in terms of the breadth of our program now uh and that's in terms of you know workshops and culinary tours and receptions and and films and filmmaking panels there's always a touch point of food at every single thing we do and as everyone knows what brings you together better than breaking bread together and in so many different forms uh so that's been something that's really wonderfully uh i used to work for the atlantic film festival here in nova scotia which is probably about the fourth largest festival in canada and just as a little funny example um we were you know a large film festival with you know the, the 
production forums and everything that you're trying to do and, and sort of compete with all the majors. And one year, very unfortunately, with the uh, uh, 911, uh, our festival was about two days before that. So everything shut down. And we could just barely get films in the door and filmmakers, and we didn't even know if anything would happen and, you know, out of respect for the situation. So we ended up having this smaller, intimate festival where we played a film if it showed up. We welcome filmmakers that they walk through the doors. It kind of broke down our whole structure. And every night we gathered whoever was together for a big meal. So there's actually filmmakers out there in the world that I still see about 20 years later that think that's how that festival was. They were like, it was so amazing. Every night we eat together and we do all these things. But the reality is, you know, that was not that event. So that really gave me a solid look at this isn't quite right. So Devour does do that. And so there's nothing better than sharing a meal with other people from around the world. Wow, beautiful. Um, okay, so Sapna, uh, the Wench Film Festival. Um, so there must have been an impetus or a starting point uh, in, in your life that, um, you know, where you, you wanted to, to curate a festival around, um, you know, encouraging women to share their voices. Is uh, Was there something that happened in your life that made you say, yes, I want to Go ahead and start my own festival. Uh, yeah. Hi, everyone. First of all, I'm a real baby when it comes to uh, festivals. This has only been our first year. So very humble to be, first of all, in your company. Uh, it means a lot. So thank you. Um, secondly, actually, Sean, I am a filmmaker um, more than I, I would say a festival programmer. Um, my first film actually is called Sindustan, which talking of culture and food and art. Um, I come from this, uh, I, I mean, this tribe, which after partition was kind of this part of um, uh, this, this state, which was left behind in Pakistan. And uh, Sindhi is, is what we are called. We're kind of spread uh, all across the world. So we don't really have any other home except what we had in have in Pakistan, which being on this side of the border, uh, we have no access to. So because also our language, we have tried many times to actually get a, a local channel for our language so we can keep the culture alive because language and culture is also very related. But we have lost that battle time and time again. So our culture is dying in India. We have the language is dying. I myself cannot speak the language. I'm ashamed, but I can't. And uh, I was 36 years old, actually, when I realized that I am actually the daughter of a refugee. And we don't look at this ourselves like this in India because people say, oh, you're Sindhi. I mean, yeah, you know, and that's pretty much it. But actually, we are refugees in post-partition India. We um, are here and no one really talks about us because during the partition, we didn't really have a very bloody partition. We weren't, there wasn't bloodshed. So a lot of people across the world have never really heard of us. Ours was more on an emotional, psychological level because we were so Sufi in our thinking. They told us leave and we said, ah, okay, we leave, you know, and that was that. So when I started actually doing some research on my own culture as an adult and understanding, I was at this concert and I saw these fakirs from Sin speak. And when I Google them, I actually found out that my most favorite singer in the whole world, Abida Parveen, is a Sindhi. I had no idea. I thought she's a Pakistani sin, you know, singer somewhere and blah, blah, blah. When I found out, wait a second, I am same as this. I am what? Like, uh, wow. And that's when I started um, digging deep into this whole culture thing. And uh, my whole story is actually told through food, through my aunt's kitchen. Sindhi curry is what we're really known for. So the entire storytelling happens in the kitchen. And uh, I just interviewed all these people who had witnessed partition, took their stories. And I picked two art forms, one Madhubani from India, the dying form, and one Ajrak from Sindh. And I got their stories tattooed on my legs. So the whole film is on my legs and um, through food. So yeah, uh, when it comes to culture, I'm so proud to even be here because this means a lot even to my culture. I mean, I never thought when you Google Sindh, you'll see my face kind of waving the flag because I so don't look like, you know, the, the statue of Sindh from any angle. Um, 
And keeping that in mind, I think that with Wench, it was very important because um, even in my journey as a filmmaker, I find it really difficult uh, for women to kind of uh, find their place in the festival market. I'm only talking about that right now. Forget the producers and making films. That's a whole nother ball game. Um, when I was picked, my film was picked in a really major festival, even in Bombay, out of 14 um, filmmakers, I was the only woman um, director. Um, I, I I was I saw this manual once, and this manual consisted of four very well known male filmmakers who are known for making films about women empowerment. And I asked them, "Hey, why is there no woman on your panel? Since you're talking about us, I mean, like, hey, man." And one of them actually said, "Oh, really? Who are the women directors?" And for me, that was it that was it there is no shortage of us and we're not the only woman festival from india um, and i hope certainly hope that we're not the last um, but i have to tell you um, in addition one we showcase 86 women so the next time someone asks me where are the women directors i just say hey man look at our roster there you go wonderful very inspiring thank you for that. uh let's jump to the united states now with uh jerusha um, so you run uh, Vero Beach Wine and Film Festival, and wine, as we know, is an important part of many cultures, specifically across Europe and, and many wine growing regions across the world. Um, is there a, a relationship that you see between wine and, and film? What is the bond and like do the two support each other? I'd say the two definitely support each other. And thank you all for joining us today. This is like such an inspiring panel, everyone's comments. I feel like with we should all have a glass of wine right now. Yes, because wine is made in pretty much every country in the world. So because of that, that has allowed us as a film festival to share, you know, to put a spotlight on so many different cultures in an unexpected way. Now, I will say that for the Vero Beach Wine and Film Festival, uh, when we program our films, our theme has always been a life worth living. And that started out as from the perspective of mental health, which is another concern that touches every country in the world. So it allows us to shine a spotlight on a very high level issue that affects economies, and the psychosis of people everywhere, right? Especially during the pandemic. The other thing that wine, though having the connection with wine, because what's our mission? To connect artists and audiences to create inspired action. So the one thing about a film festival is it allows you to expose people to ideas in a space of very intimate personal contact. So we put ideas of around culture in front of you in a space where we're hoping that you will discover shared values of the people around you. And in that space, right, you will connect in such a way that you cannot go back into the world as you were before. And I would say, I think that is one of the main things that differentiates a film festival from any other artistic expression that brings people together. And that for us, the wine, besides being a great business, you know, prospect has just been a wonderful leveler in terms of connecting people, this idea of toasting and drinking and just being in a space of conviviality has it so that people are open to new ideas in such a way that they might not otherwise be. And I think from the filmmaker standpoint, they love it when they arrive and see that they're going to be celebrated in such, in such a way. You know, I think that's also the very cool thing about the film festival is we don't treat every film the same way. So having like a dozen screening venues and places to come together also allows us to treat the actual culture of that particular film in such a way, because each of the filmmakers 
has a viewpoint on how their film should be shown and maybe where it should be shown and how people should come together. So we also think about that. And I would say a lot of that comes from my background, having grown up in Hawaii, which is a polycultural society where people are throwing in their different traditions into the mix. And then we are all basically creating a shared culture in an island. So for that one four day weekend of the film festival, we are creating a culture for our film festival where we say all are welcome and everyone belongs. Lovely. Very nice. Um, so Bina, your festival is um, largely regarded as one of the leading cultural events in, in India. So why, um, what do you attribute to that um, cultural success? Why do your patrons keep coming back year after year? Um, what is it about your, the choice, the artistic choices you make and, and your film selections that, that you're hearing from your patrons? Why do you think they love your festival? Uh, interesting. I think um, more than the festival, it's, uh, it's an atmosphere of, uh, it's the love for cinema, let's say. Let's say the base for everybody wanting to come back is they just love cinema, they love films. But uh, as I said earlier, we try to sort of, uh, um, sort of inject, let's say, in a rather uh, manipulative way, uh, things that uh, you wouldn't think of otherwise, uh, which is what I think my role as, uh, or I think the role of a festival is that you think, oh, I love cinema and I want to come and see somebody's work and maybe somebody's got an Oscar, or one at Cannes, and that's what I want to see. But you arrive and you just see films from the most unexpected parts of the world or the most unexpected people. Yeah, so I think the this uh, encountering of the unexpected, the uh, ability then to sort of uh, interact with the unexpected, that that I think um, does attract a lot of people because I've uh, introduced a whole lot of filmmakers, uh, a lot of um, uh, ideas, topic. You know, you also curate around ideas. Uh, I think uh, that has made it quite interesting. So you're not uh, always looking. I think what you've discovered about the film festival programming in Kerala is that you're not going to only find the big films, but you're going to find those little gems. You're going to find those little films that you may not have heard of, but uh, sort of just open up a different world. Uh, I think that's what's the exciting thing. And I try to, we try to sort of, keep it like that, that you're not uh, sort of catering only to big cinema, but you're catering to uh, interesting cinema. Cinema interesting in ideas and even from different parts of the world. So yeah, so that's, I, I would think that would be a, a reason. And yeah, and I think it's driven by the passion, by the whole team to, to make this more than just an event. You know, you want to make it a cultural intervention, basically. Yeah. Good. Um, so, Leah, I noticed that your film festival this year has a new theme, and it's a global indigenous uh, cinema and cuisine. So, um, you know, just in looking around the world, in many countries, indigenous populations were often forced away from their homes by colonizers and uh, therefore there's these broken relationships between you know indigenous people and, and non-indigenous indigenous people so can can um, something like a film help repair those relationships and what uh, what is your uh, impetus for for doing the, um, this, this theme this year uh, thanks Sean um... We are, in fact, right now in the middle of uh, watching hundreds and hundreds of titles uh, to put our film program together, which really informs the rest of the program, as you all know. Um, every year at Devour, we strike out with a theme. And uh, a lot of this, is, it started a couple of years ago where we were working with uh, a, a local First Nations group called Glooscap here and produced a couple of really meaningful events uh, one specifically with in partnership with a local winery as well called Beyond Terroir, which really was an exploration of 
the terroir of this beautiful wine valley where our, our film festival is located and history and culture and reconciliation. So we just were forming these wonderful friendships. And then through films over the years, we kept seeing so much content because as I mentioned before, we're really <laughs> scouring every corner of the of earth and up and down the food chain to find good stories uh, and sort of expose everyone to these cultures and foods and issues. Uh, the festival was actually born out of uh, Slow Food uh, Canada here. And uh, my business partner, Michael Howell, was the director of Slow Food Canada for a while. So the ethos of slow food and finding those sort of understanding where your food comes from, who's making it, all the issues around it kind of always informed our program all the time. It sort of sits in the background, even with all the fun of the event, this is always at our core. So yeah, it only made sense to kind of go down this track for uh, indigenous foods. And we started the theme, uh, we, we always start the theme, you know, as you all know as well, the year before, maybe two years before, because of the conversations and relationships you're having with people. Um, but now it feels more timely than ever, uh, given what's going on in the world and specifically in Canada. Uh, there's a lot of issues at hand right now. So perhaps this is hitting when people are actually looking for this kind of relationship and information, we hope. Oh, very nice. Um, okay, so uh, let's go back to Sapna. So when, um, you know, you're a living example of a, um, you know, a, a powerful woman picking up a camera and, and making films. So how do you encourage like the next generation of uh, female filmmakers to to take that first step and to use cinema as a language to to promote their culture or to critique their culture? I think luckily I come from a country where, where it's driven by cinema. So <laughs> there's no need for me to kind of tell someone to do it. But I think what's really important, like I said, is women submitting their films. And this has been a really uh, big problem for us because even if you look at our currency compared to the worldwide uh, currency ratio, it is really expensive uh, for people in India to submit to, you know, American or European festivals is, and you know, all they long i myself play that game i'm like i'm an indie filmmaker please give me a waiver and of course you know i hate to play that game because every, it's not fair for them to just give me a waiver i understand that so i think uh, my biggest goal with bench film festival is to tie up with other festivals and just get waivers so more to encourage more women to submit because if you don't submit how are you even going to get selected you know um that is the first goal there's no shortage of women making films by the way we um there are uh, uh, a lot of us and technicians, uh, if not just directed, but even there are technicians who are working on films, writers, editors, uh, musicians. So I just feel like, you know, um, this year we teamed up with Stuttgart, Indian Film Festival Stuttgart, which is one of the largest uh, Indian film festivals in Europe. And they gave us five waivers. Uh, out of that, actually, uh, one of our submitters did make it to the festival. It was doing pretty good. I mean, it's part of the festival. Uh, we tied up with South Asian film market which is a fabulous way for women filmmakers to get funding to make their films so they've given us 10 waivers to give to our um, women so this year alone uh, what happened to me a fabulous thing um, my st horror story because that's where I'm going uh, got selected at Bifan which is you know genre film explosion and it is them who pointed out to me that I was the first ever Indian woman film director to ever be at this market. So that right there is fabulous because now I'm mapping this out. Once you map it, then you show it to all the other women in India. Hey, listen, you horror filmmakers, this is what we could do because there are so few of us that are out there, but so many of us who want to make this these films, right? So I think that with Wench, this is what we want to do, collaborate. Um, so, you know, uh, Leah, Dina, Jerusha, please um, give us some waivers. Yeah. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Um, Jerusha, you're a programmer who receives submissions from around the world. Um, have you noticed any cultural similarities between filmmakers from uh, certain regions when you, uh, when you watch their films? Or what are the similarities uh, that you're noticing from, you know, maybe filmmakers from France or filmmakers from the U.S.? Are there uh, certain cultural similarities that you, you see in the programs? 
that's interesting question, Sean. And it may just be the types of films that are submitted to us, but I don't know that I would say that I do. Um, I think what's interesting, so for instance, um, we might, like one year we got quite a large number of films from France. They were all different from anime to um, short films to doc. I mean, I don't know that other than the language that I would have said that I would have seen any um, through, through themes, um, which by the way, was one of the reasons we took like half those films because they were all so different and coming from such different perspectives. And I would say that I think that that is one of the um, myths around culture, right? Is that people tend to think of cultures as monolithic. Um, being a black person, people tend to think of there being black culture. Oh my gosh, <laughs> there are so many layers to that onion that you could spend your entire lifetime, right? Peeling back what it means to be black and still not have touched all of those places. So I think that is, I mean, I think that's one of the really cool things about being and sitting in the seat I sit in where I do get to see all these films is knowing that yes, um, the perspectives from one region or one country could be so vast that you might not experience all of that country's culture. You can't experience it all in one film. Like the purpose of that film is not to show you what it means to be Indian or what it means to be Israeli. It's, it's a slice of life that that particular filmmaker has chosen to show you, which is why we are always so committed to having filmmakers at the film festival. So our last festival, we screened 104 films and we had, I believe, 86 filmmakers there because we want you there to share what the genesis of that film is and where it comes from and what's that slice of life that you are seeking to portray. And Satna, yes, we do give waivers because we, that's another thing about culture, right? So the film festival itself is a culture. So part of our culture is recognizing that filmmakers come from different parts of the world with different constraints, right? So as a film programmer, I am very attuned to the idea of the equity, right? So in the United States, you may be more able to pay those fees than someone from Iran or Afghanistan or from India. So I have to remember that within our programming base, you know? So we do set aside a certain number of waivers to allow for this because otherwise, right? What's the point? <laughs> You know, you, would, you, you wouldn't be able to represent the world, and then we wouldn't be culturally equitable. Excellent. Yay. That's, yeah. great. That's a great point. So speaking of festivals and like coming from, um, you know, both a filmmaking perspective and having my films travel to different festivals, um, I've had the opportunity to connect with other producers and, and colleagues from other countries, and sometimes um, cultures can be uh, blended. Um, so, you, you know, in, in my case, we brought a bunch of Canadians over to Italy to make a film uh, that was a movie called From the Vine. And it was, um, you know, having Canadian talent and Italian talent on, on board working on the same film to create something that works in harmony uh, is, is really interesting. And that wouldn't have happened without the, uh, you know, festivals such as the ones that you run. So is there a story in your um, programming experience or your festival experience where you've noticed two filmmakers from other countries um, come together to create a, a, a product or a, an artistic expression, uh, a co-production essentially, as, uh, as to have two cultures come together to create something uh, harmonious? And I'll throw that out to anyone who uh, may have an example just say we had an incredible experience where so it was a Israeli filmmaker 
who connected with some Polish um, chefs, filmmaker, because the film was about food. And it was it was like really cool because she ended up not only did the the the, the guys in the film came, so they were they were um, filmmakers, but they were also the subject of the film. So they ended up coming. She came. She wasn't able to get the winemaker to come, but she got the wines to come. And they and it was interesting because when they all got first of all, we didn't even know if they were going to make it. It was my first time where filmmakers had asked me to write the visa letters and they did it like three weeks before. It was just like, this is a Hail Mary situation, like everybody. And somehow, you know, they all got there. Then they got there and their film wasn't formatted the right way to, it, to show it. So then they decide they're going to cook food because the place that we have the film screening in happens to have a kitchen. So then while they're going to cook the food, they're going to figure out how to format the audience. It was amazing to me because the connection between those filmmakers and the audience, it was like this moment of co-creation that was not only happening just between those two cultures, right? But happening between everyone in the audience with them all trying to get to this one goal of seeing this movie, which, which I was like, you know, I, I mean, I just kind of stood back and just sort of took it in and watched the kind of piece this whole thing together, but was totally blown away. And to this day, everybody talks about that moment. Everyone asks if we're gonna have them back. Have they made another film? I mean, it was just an incredible experience for everyone. Nice. Like in and real time. Bina, your festival has been around for like a quarter century or so. You must have some examples of uh, filmmakers. Oh, yeah. Lots of examples. <clears throat> well, not so much of co-production. There have been, I mean, India makes so many films and uh, a lot of people come here and make films, but just uh, this encountering of different cultures. So you have a Korean filmmaker who stands in front of an audience of 5,000 people and sings a Korean song. And by the end of it, you have the whole audience singing with him, not knowing what it is, not knowing what the song is, but just that, uh, you know, they'd just seen his film and they connected. Um, you also have uh, encounters of people who suddenly come to India and uh, astonished by all sorts of things. In fact, uh, Sapna at our film festival in the earlier, in the early days, uh, women hardly came to the festival. And it was a very sad thing. And I really worked on that. But uh, uh, there was this South uh, uh, American filmmaker, well known filmmaker, and he's standing in, we have these huge audiences, it's unbelievable. So he was standing in front of this huge audience, and he said, are there no women in this, uh, in this state? Are there no women in this state? Because it was just full of men. Yeah, so I think it's a kind of two-way thing. So you um, have the filmmakers learn so much. You have, and you get these question and answers. Yeah, it's, a, it's really something, actually. When I hear Jerusha talk about it, it's just all that magic that happens around uh, the festival at those moments. So you, you, you know, for people who are not part of it, you just think, oh, all these maddies going, charging to one film to the other. But it's not. It's just, it's a different world, actually. It just sort of embraces you into, um, uh, into a culture of, uh, I think, of openness of the mind, which I really uh, enjoy. Enjoy being part of, watch, um imbibe also myself yeah fights oh wow we've also had fights we've had you know but yeah people i mean um audiences don't like a film or they don't understand it they they you know uh, meet the filmmaker they talk about it they, they argue over wine or not wine. Well, here we don't drink so much wine, but over <laughs> alcohol. So yeah, it's a it's a lovely uh, sense of 
the film becoming just uh, an excuse for this space becoming a kind of multicultural sharing. Let's have a good one. Yeah. I mean, it's an, it, it is kind of an embarrassment of riches with this festival because we encounter so many great personalities. And of course, during the uh, week of our event, it's a mix of chefs and filmmakers that kind of descend on the festival. And it's just always a, a, a great mix. But one example I, that I was recalling as you were all speaking uh, years ago, we had a, a wonderful filmmaker named Sarah Borealis from uh, New Orleans come to our event. And she had spent a lot of time in Mexico. I can't remember if she was what her studies were that took her there all the time, but she fell in love with this area and uh, ended up making a short documentary about called The Path of Stone Soup and basically found this small community that had this wonderful tradition of making this, this soup where you heat rocks in a riverbed and catch your fish and then you cook it all in one bowl. And on this specific day in this culture, it's the women that get to sit on the riverbanks and finally take a break while all the men go into the river and fish and do this whole process. So as part of this, she was a big thinker and really fun, still talk to her all the time. And she decided they started a Kickstarter campaign to get as much of the community to our festival. So if you can imagine this, this group of, of mostly family members, about four or five funded their with their Kickstarter campaign. They traveled from Mexico to Nova Scotia. They brought the rocks from the riverbed in their suitcases, if you can imagine. <laughs> And we screened their film. And then afterwards, we, were, we had a sort of larger street food rally with all kinds of people. And we'd set the group up in a tent and they were making the stone soup right there on the spot. So people like came out of the theater, kind of freaked out because there was the family in front of them making the soup, heating the rocks, doing the whole thing. So it was a, a really wonderful, uh, wonderful experience. Man, all of your stories are just making me yearn for travel again and to, to be in, in this one room overlooking the screen and, and sharing ideas. So I'm, I'm getting very uh, emotional listening to all your stories. Um, just thinking about the last uh, 18 months or so, uh, the arts, you know, as it's been throughout history, is always uh, seems to be under attack and uh, the arts are underfunded and sometimes underappreciated. Uh, but in looking back over these the last 18 months, what role has um, the arts given to the world, uh, you know, when culturally, when you're thinking about uh, what has transpired over the pandemic? Does anyone want to, you know, kind of take the, the reins here and talk about the importance of uh, arts and, and culture during the, uh, the last 18 months or so? Um, I can I can give you an example, maybe just of my film Sindustan. Um, I think it it uh, it premiered in uh, New York at an Indian film festival, and it traveled. Uh, it did quite well, but it traveled around the world. But a friend of mine, he is um, a, a research analyst, whatever for online, and you know, uh, just a, a few months ago, he sent me a screenshot. And uh, in that, there were these spikes, whatever, and sin. And he said, you know, I just want you to know, I don't think you are aware that never has sin been Googled so much till your documentary premiered in America. And that to me, I mean, it gives me goosebumps even when I talk about it, because the fact being is this is why we make films. I mean, it's not for me, but this one, I mean, just for my community to see that so many people who were not Indian or Sindhis from or Pakistanis were Googling because they'd never heard of this little place. And that 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 has been really wonderful. And another wonderful thing is because um, the entire story is tattooed on my legs, um, that being a homage because I was not given a visa to go there twice. I tried twice, but because of the political tension uh, between the two countries. So I, I never really got to go home where my father was born but i collaborated with a musician uh in in sin and he actually took a camera and went to the place where my father was born my ancestral home and that's in the film so just footage from there was done because of him uh that my film was made because he got me footage from sin where i could not go but he showed me home and uh, because for me now home is on my legs because wherever i go sin goes with me so art plays a really big role even if it's not in cinema and even if it's just in the form of 
tattoos where a lot of people, you know, look down upon, but people have actually reached out to me and said, hey, what is that form? Because they've never seen Madhubani or Ajrak used in tattoos. So my friend Amber, who's a filmmaker sitting in Brooklyn, and she actually got an Ajrak tattoo on her. So that's how you spread culture, right? There are many ways. Uh, and the fact that Ajrak is on someone's skin in Brooklyn makes me so happy. Yeah. Lovely. Um, so running a festival is um, is exhausting. There's not not enough hours during the day. There are many um, you know problems to deal with on a, on a daily basis. You know, film hasn't arrived, or we you know tickets are oversold for certain screenings. What um, and you must be so stressed during the, uh, the the course of a festival, and everyone wants your attention. So what what makes it worthwhile? What are the um, what are those moments that you kind of live for when you're uh, running your festival and there's, you know, you're running on, on very little sleep and uh, you're, you're tired and um, people want your attention. What, what makes it all worthwhile? Why do you keep doing it year after year? Well, one is it does get over after a week. <laughs> they all go back. <laughs> Certainly, no. Uh, well, it's... Um... It's everything we've just said. It's just the it's just the joy of having everybody, of being together, of seeing how it permeates. Um, yeah, it's making friends. It's um, friends who you may not see for years. That's the interesting thing with film festival uh, friends is that often you don't meet for years, and then suddenly, ten or fifteen years later, you'll come up with somebody who's made a film and started some journey here. So. Uh, it's it's all that I think it's just the I think it's about being human and being connected which makes it so um, and and the sense of it for a larger good somehow when you make your own film you're you're happy with your film and of course it shows everywhere and so on but this is a kind of more diffused sense of uh, how you share I'd love to hear from everybody about this yeah, I, no, I, I, I agree with Bina. It's about the greater good, you know, and then there's this overwhelming sense of adventure. I love the fact that, you know, so when we created the Vero Beach Wine and Film Festival, we literally taught an entire city how to fest. So we, we would do these talks and say, you know, how many people have been to a film festival before? And one person would raise their hand. So the morning of the fest, I get this phone call like at 7 a.m. on my cell. I have now since learned never to do answer my cell phone <laughs> festival days because the person on the other end of the line was so upset. She was like, I bought these passes you know, and I don't know what to do with them. And where's the schedule? And what do you do? And what? And I was like, okay, so you go to the website, and you see that there's that purple button. And you and she's like, Oh, okay. And she and she just hangs up. And I was like, Whoa, if that this is what this is going to be like. So I get to the first screening, which, is, you know, like one of our largest at this big theater. And I see people coming in, it's obvious they don't have a clue as to what they're doing. You know, they're just racing in. And then I see other people helping them. And I realize they're gonna get it. They're gonna do it because now they've created their own community, which is the whole point of this, right? That they are gonna come together on this journey of cultural exploration and they're going to do it. So for me, each year, it's like being Santa Claus, right? The films are a gift. You're wrapping them up. You're making sure they're all together. You've got the right tree <laughs> decorated, the right things coming together. And then Christmas morning, the look of surprise and delight on their faces festival morning makes it all worth it. Because you know that after they're going to go through this experience that for some of them will be life changing. And that includes the filmmakers, the audience, the volunteers, because the volunteers are the ones who are doing the most stretching, right? 
Like we're asking ordinary people to perform in an extraordinary way. And when that happens, their joy and their learning is so great that it just makes you feel so warm and fuzzy because they're going to impart that to the next group of volunteers. And that's what keeps the flywheel going. So that's what that's what makes it work for me. Just gonna add, well, just that, uh, you know, the real hard work is in the lead up and the fundraising and the programming and all that. So when the festival hits, and it's a million details at once, there's kind of a thrilling high to that where everything's in your head and a whole team has sort of arrived in terms of the returning staff and volunteers that is playing out this whole thing. So you're just kind of watching every single thing and understanding how it's moving. And you can call up a film title in five seconds and it, it really is a, a, a wonderful high, but there's nothing better than, I find every festival, you do have your film favorites. and there's nothing better than standing in the back of the theater with the filmmaker at your side, just adjusting the volume, making sure it's starting okay, and then kind of retreating together. There's, it's just a wonderful feeling. So yeah, connection and the high of all the details is, is what keeps it rolling in my world. And Sapna? I think, yeah, we're like, uh, you know, the COVID child who was just born in a world full of masks. So we really don't know <laughs> what the world looks like without masks. So this was our first year, edition one. We wanted to be offline, but because we got hit again. So we were only online this year, but even the rush of just being online with our panels and putting it all together and team, I think you are nothing without a team. I mean, like I have realized that and I'm really thankful for a wonderful team that has come together and now planning addition to, and we're hoping maybe we get to experience some of these lovely experiences uh, that you guys are talking about because I, I would love nothing more but to be hybrid. I mean, you know, so fingers crossed. Wonderful. Well, at this point, maybe we can open it up to uh, audience questions. If there are any, just raise your hand and we'll, we'll uh... We'll call you out to ask your question. And if not, we can, uh, okay. Someone's ask connected. Sean how it feels to go to a festival with a film. What makes it special for you? It's special for me. That's a great question. Um, I, well, I love the thrill of, of travel and, and meeting new people, certainly. And uh, it is that um, exact sentiment. It's, it's meeting and partnering with other colleagues that um, that make films and and blending two cultures together to create uh, a, a co-production. I find that the most harmoniously exciting um, and culturally stimulating um, aspect of uh, uh, my job and both in the past and, and with present projects I'm, I'm developing. So I just love that a, a, a artistic project can exist in two different cultures and and share the same purpose and uh we get to share in the in not only the filmmaking process but the 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 business side of things as well it's like um going into business with people that you love and are are uh, inspired by equally so yeah that's what i i love about the whole initiative Okay, well, if there are no questions, I'd like to thank our panelists for today, uh, Leah, Bina, Jerusha, and Sapna. These are all very inspiring people who are doing great work to uh, not only advance and preserve uh, cultures, but um, they do so much more through uh, through the, you know our shared love of, of cinema. So thank you today, and thank you to Culture Cinema 2021. Thank you, Sean. That was uh, wonderful. Uh, and it's amazing to have, uh, as I said earlier, cross-continental, cross-cultural representation and uh, the whole spirit of uh, culture cinema that, you know, we decide to uh, start the festival. It reflects in this panel where we have festival directors from different unique concepts, all talking about a cultural aspect. And um, thank you everybody for giving your time. Uh, you are all in different time zones. Some of you have just woken up and having a morning uh, tea or coffee, probably, and uh, you know, joining us. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, we are, we will be about to retire for the day in a couple of hours. So I think it's very interesting experience that we have uh, all had a lot of uh, learnings, a lot of knowledge from uh, what you have spoken about your personal experiences, and I hope that we'll meet again in future soon. Um, 
for now it's online but hopefully soon we'll be in a hybrid situation maybe we'll go offline in a couple of years we we don't know how things will shape up but i think we should look at that journey it's a small step we have taken uh, aim is to bring the uh, world together uh, have more friends have more cross cultural representations bring in people together and uh, that's what we uh, want to go ahead with as far as this property culture cinema hopefully we'll have more interesting things in the days to come and uh, we'll stay connected i want to um, express my gratitude and thanks to all of you for spending your valuable time uh, coming in over here and being a part of uh, our journey thank you so much